Next, we are going to fetch expense entities from the persistent store and display them in a table view. That table view belongs in the expenses view controller. So let's navigate to that class. And let's create a new view controller lifecycle, override a new view controller lifecycle method. View will appear. So view will appear. Dale, when is this function called? When the view will is about to appear. Yep, and the naming convention explains everything you need to know about this function. It's called right before the view will appear. And here's actually where we're gonna do our fetching. The reason why we're gonna do our fetching and the view will appear is say you just created a new expense and you navigate back from the new expense um, view controller, we would always wanna get all the expenses here. Before we actually do our fetching, we need to actually store our expenses somewhere that we're gonna fetch. So let's navigate up to the top below our date formatter and create a new variable. Var expenses equals, and it's gonna be an array of expenses, and we're gonna just initialize that to an empty array. Now that we have this data store for our expenses in this view controller, let's actually perform our fetch. So to perform a fetch, we need access to our managed context, just like we needed access to it to actually um, create our convenience initializer for our subclass. So let's get that right now by doing guard let app delegate is equal to UI application dot shared dot delegate as app delegate. If this does not succeed, we will simply want to return out of our view will appear. Because if we don't have access to our app delegate, we don't have access to our persistent container, which means we don't have access to our managed object context. So now that we have our app delegate, let's get our managed context. So let managed context equals app delegate dot persistent container dot view context. And now we need to create a new constant. This constant is gonna be called fetch request. And we actually have to define the type on this. And this is gonna be an ns fetch. Oh, an autocomplete's not working, Dale. What do we always say if we're working with a framework and autocomplete's not working? We probably didn't import it. Yep, so up at the very top, right beneath import UI kit, let's actually import core data. Now that we've imported core data, we can use all core data functions and types. And there's no model module called core date, but core data. There we go, everything's happy. Let's actually now do our NS fetch request constant. NS fetch request is actually what is called a generic. This means that it can behave with any types that you give it as long as they meet certain requirements. And we need to actually pass our expense into our fetch request. Now that we've done that, we can create our fetch request by accessing expense. And expenses have a generic fetch request function for us and we will be using that. Notice the type, and as fetch request, less than expense, greater than. Um, this is saying it's an NS fetch request that retrieves expense objects. I'm gonna press enter. If we did not actually specify the type here, it would actually only fetch NS manage objects. This is not what we want, we actually want the expense objects, so we need to specify that. Now that we have our fetch request, let's actually perform our fetch. This is gonna fetch all of our objects within our context, and that's exactly what we want. So I am going to say expenses equal, and then I'm gonna use the try keyword, managed context dot fetch, and notice fetch request takes in, our fetch takes in a request of type ns fetch request, and we have that fetch request, so let's pass our fetch request in. So I'm gonna get yelled at here. The reason why I'm gonna get yelled at is fetch can actually throw an exception. And you can see that by looking at the documentation and notice it uses the throw keywords.
This means we need to wrap this in a do catch block. So I'm gonna go above our expenses, say do, copy and paste our code. And then if an exception is thrown, let's catch that exception and print out um, fetch could not be performed. So at this moment, every single time this view will appear, we're going to our managed context, which accesses our persistent store, and we're fetching all of our expenses that have been saved, that have been saved ever, essentially. So now that we've retrieved all of those expenses, we need to tell the table view that it needs to reload. We can do that, and let's even do that in our do catch, it's by accessing our table view, which would be expenses table view dot reload data. So what this is doing is if the fetch can be performed and we get all of our expenses, it will reload the data of our table view. If our fetch could not be performed, it will simply just print out fetch could not be formed and it will not actually reload the data because there would be no new data to reload it to. So now that we've actually fetched, let's actually set our table view functions accordingly. So I'm gonna navigate down to the bottom of the class and let's first look at number of rows in section. Right now we have it returning zero and our job is to actually return the amount of expenses that should be displayed in this table view. So I'm gonna access our expenses array and say count, meaning that we should have a single row per expense and this is exactly what we want. Now in our cell for row at index path, let's actually access our expense for that cell by creating a new constant, let expense equal expenses, and let's get the one at our index path dot row. Now that we have our expense um, for this cell, let's actually start setting up cell properties by saying cell dot text label dot text is equal to expense dot name. And now well, let's set the subtitle of this cell equal to the date that it actually occurred on. And to do that, we need to use our date formatter. Problem is our date formatter does not have a function that takes in an optional date, meaning we need to unwrap our expense date. So if let date equals expense date. And now we can actually say cell.detail text label dot text equals date formatter. And Dale, what's the function for this? So we are getting a string from the date. So it would be um, date from string. Uh, or string no, we from date. String from yep. date, the opposite. Yep, we have the date, we want to turn that into a string. We have the date unwrapped. Notice that the type has to be uh, non-optional, perfect. Let's pass it in our date. Now that we've done this, we have completely initialized our cell and I am getting yelled at because the detailed text label is actually optional and I forgot to put the question mark there. At this moment, it should all work. So I'm gonna build and run this application And right off the bat, it doesn't fetch anything, but that's actually because we have not actually created any expenses. So let's go up to the plus button to create a new expense. Let's say I want to buy a iPhone 25, and it's gonna be extremely expensive, $2,000. And let's buy it right now at this exact moment. When I click save, it actually saves that expense to the persistent store, meaning that the app that expense will always be there. And then when we appear on this view controller, the view will appear is called, and it fetches that expense from core data, which is backed by SQLite.